Hey, decided to get back into recording educational videos, and now we're going to talk about how to properly identify quartz and its characteristics. Uh, we have here my USB camera. It's pulled up. There, you can... The first hint that it's quartz is the luster. Luster is when you've got a certain visual property. In this case, it's vitreous or subvitreous that we're looking for. What those mean is it's glass-like or diamond-like in appearance. So as you can see, this really does look like a broken piece of glass. But this is a quartz crystal that I found in some limestone. Uh, some other features that help you identify quartz. Uh, you see these rings here? Um, yeah, those that weird banding rain pattern. That's a conchoidal fracture. And quartz is known for conchoidal, subconchoidal, and irregular fractures. What those mean simply is like fingernail shaped or uh, really uneven, like light bumps in hills, valleys, things like that. Another thing we've got going on here is we've got the fractures themselves being iridescent in some areas, uh, like down here. Quartz can be uh, very rainbow colored when you have fractures. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice property, as you can see here. Uh, let me get a better view. There we go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that will help you identify quartz as opposed to fakes, since there's a lot of glass that's shaped like quartz out there, is the glass isn't going to have natural fractures, and it's not going to have bubbles either. Uh, if you look closely enough in quartz, let's see if I can get it. You should be able to see bubbles from formation. I, um, well, the example I'm using here is a particularly nice piece of quartz, so it doesn't have much in the way of bubbles. But usually, there are evident bubbles. Uh, you can kind of see some here in the back. Just had to get the right focus. So if this was glass, all the glass replicas tend to not have that. Also, quartz is a lot harder than glass. So a simple hardness test will do that. Quartz will scratch glass easily. It will scour it, uh, which means it will leave a deep groove that you can actually feel with your finger if you run your finger over the scratch. But if you're if you're got a fake quartz crystal, the glass is just going to kind of rub on each other and might leave a scratch, but it's not going to scour it the same way quartz does. Then there's the crystal shape of quartz. Um, it always has like six sides, although they are not always even. Uh, it has three-way symmetry, usually. And what that means is you're going to have two faces on one side that match each other, two faces that match each other, and then two faces that match each other. And they'll be parallel and about the same shape. But with uh, and with a really good quartz crystal, you can get up to six-fold symmetry where they all match each other. And if you've got a full crystal, they'll come to a termination. The quartz has a lot of different kind of terminations. Some of them come to an even point with six faces. Some of them have an elongated face and then a short face. And that's due to one side uh, growing faster than the other. And sometimes you end up with weird things like skeletal quartz, where the outsides of the crystal were going faster than the inside. And then you get what people like to call a hopper crystal. Uh, so, figured starting with quartz is a good way to do a video. There's also calcite in here. Right here in this crack is a scalenohedron, also known as dog tooth calcite. Um, so, I've got another quartz crystal that for reference over here that I collected recently. Ah, and I'll drop it and everything. Okay, here we go. Maybe this one will have more evident bubbles. Uh, here, focus, focus. So this one's not nearly as clear, but you can already see on the surface here, 
parts where it grew faster than others, making that uneven surface right here. Um, we've got those conchoidal fractures again, which are evident, and we've got a little bit of iridescence. You can see this end is pretty screwed up. Got broken in many ways. Nice little golden iridescence there, though. For the record, that is not a gold inclusion. That's just light plate. There is no gold or other heavy metals where I was collecting. So, just because it looks gold does not mean it's always gold. As you can see, this is a fairly long crystal. That, let's get a different angle on it. See if we can get a clear window. Ah, uh, shoot. Oh, there's a lot of, let's see, there's a lot of quartz crystals in this sample. That's just the main one. You can see here more of that telltale iridescence, some twinning, some fracturing. Not seeing much in the way of super evident bubbles yet. Oh, I can, I can sort of see some in here. Um, yeah, I gotta stop shaking in one moment. <laughs> kind of hard to hold the sample. Yes, yeah, so here we've got twinning in the crystal. See how it's going off in a V shape? That's because it decided to grow in one direction and the other. So this is a pretty cool example of twinning. Uh, you can have twinning happen inside the crystal, or it will make offshoots, uh, intersecting crystals of various kinds. There's a bunch of kinds of twinning when it comes to quartz. Let's see what we've got here. A bunch more quartz crystals on this sample. It's just a bunch of quartz mixed in with calcite. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get double terminated quartz, where it has a point on both ends, like this piece. Right there. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Yeah, so I make a lot of noises when I'm doing this because I ramble. Anyway, here here's the uh, here's your little tutorial, I suppose. Of ooh, actually here's a crystal that might show us better. Ooh, that's a clear one. You can see the twinning on the end there, like the other one. It was really clear. Anyway, I'll do some more videos on other minerals in the future, probably with a little less awkwardness. Uh, thanks for tuning in.